Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, a toy maker named Geppetto lived in a small village. Geppetto was a kind old man who was loved by everybody. He loved children and made wooden toys for them. He also wanted a child of his own. But that wish never came true. One day, he went to the forest to collect wood to make toys. As he was walking in the forest, he found a very large and beautiful log on the ground. He thought this log would be great for the new puppet he was planning to make. He grabbed the log and headed home. Through the night he worked, trying to shape the log. In the end, he created a beautiful puppet of a young boy from the log. Geppetto loved his creation very much. He felt as if it was his own child and named the puppet Pinocchio. He was so exhausted that he decided to go to bed. Before he fell asleep, he looked one last time at Pinocchio and wished that it was a real living boy. This wish of kind-hearted Geppetto echoed in the darkness of the night. A fairy godmother appeared out of nowhere. The fairy had heard Geppetto's wish and came to make it real. She looked at Pinocchio, smiled, and pointed her wand at the puppet. The magic light coming out of her wand enveloped Pinocchio and slowly disappeared inside the puppet. Suddenly, Pinocchio's eyes started to open and close. It was moving now. The fairy godmother, pleased with her work, disappeared back into the darkness of the night. Pinocchio, however, was looking around with disbelief. He tried to stand from where he was sitting and walk, but lost his balance and fell. He tried again, and this time he managed to stand straight. With clumsy steps, he was trying to learn how to walk. Of course, Geppetto woke up due to all this noise. He couldn't believe his eyes. He rubbed his eyes, thinking, I must still be asleep and dreaming. However, it wasn't a dream. The puppet he had made was moving very much alive in front of him. Pinocchio came towards Geppetto and hugged him, telling him that his wish was granted and he was his son. Geppetto was filled with joy and hugged Pinocchio back. After that day, they started living happily together. After a while, Geppetto decided that Pinocchio was old enough to go to school. He should study and learn like the other children. Unfortunately, Geppetto didn't have any money to buy books for Pinocchio. So, he sold his coat to find enough money and returned home. He gave the money to Pinocchio and told him that he must go to school now and buy books with the money. Pinocchio was very happy and left the house and went to the market. As he was going to the bookstore, a crowd in the distance drew his attention. He approached the crowd, but he couldn't see anything due to his short height. He passed between the people and moved to the front. There was a circus tent ahead of him. The clown at the gate called for Pinocchio and said, come on in now. We have very entertaining shows in our circus. So Pinocchio started to go in, but the clown stopped him and said he had to pay the entrance fee. Pinocchio gave the money Geppetto had given him for books to the clown and entered the circus. When he entered the circus, a puppeteer was displaying a puppet show on the stage and the audience was watching the show with joy. When Pinocchio saw the puppets, he got very excited because they were just like him. He immediately jumped on the stage and tried to introduce himself to the puppets. However, what he didn't know was that the puppets were not alive like him. He got tangled in the ropes that the puppet master was holding and fell down to the floor with the puppets. The puppeteer descended to the stage in anger. He couldn't believe his eyes. He realized that it was a puppet that could move without the ropes. He thought that he could earn a lot of money from this, so he immediately grabbed Pinocchio and put him in one of the cages. Although Pinocchio called for help, nobody helped him. Pinocchio, locked in the cage, started crying in despair. At that instant, the fairy that gave him life 
suddenly appeared beside him. She asked Pinocchio how he got here. Pinocchio was embarrassed to tell her that he had entered the circus with the money Geppetto had given him to buy books, so he lied. He told the fairy that the puppeteer had seen him outside and kidnapped him. As soon as he finished his sentence, his nose grew longer. Pinocchio was shocked. The fairy came closer to Pinocchio and said, You're not lying, are you, Pinocchio? As soon as Pinocchio said, No, I'm not lying, his nose grew even longer, so much so that he couldn't lift his head up anymore. The fairy came even closer to Pinocchio and said, Now tell me the truth. Whereupon Pinocchio, ashamed, told the fairy how he had used the money Geppetto had given him to buy books in order to enter the circus and got tangled in the puppet's ropes and how the puppeteer had kidnapped him and locked him in this cage. When he finished, his nose had returned to its original length. The fairy thanked Pinocchio for telling the truth. She said, I will rescue you from this place and I will also give you the money Geppetto had given you to buy the book. But this time, you must go directly to the bookstore, buy your books and head for school. Then she waved her wand and the door of the cage opened. Pinocchio got out of the cage and put his hand in his pocket. The money Geppetto had given him for the books was there. He thanked the fairy, promising that he would immediately set out for the bookstore. As he was walking on the road, he ran into a fox. The fox had seen Pinocchio from far away and understood that he was very naive. He interrupted Pinocchio and asked him where he was going. Pinocchio showed the fox the money in his pocket and told him that he was going to buy books and go to school. The cunning fox quickly devised a plan and thought about tricking Pinocchio and taking his money. He told Pinocchio that there were money fields a little further down the road and if Pinocchio buried his money there, it would grow and become a money tree and he could collect money from the tree any time he wanted. Poor naive Pinocchio was instantly fooled by the fox's words and started following the fox. After walking for a while, the fox said, this is the place, you can bury the money now. Pinocchio quickly dug a small hole and put all of his money inside this hole and covered it. So, what will happen now, Mr. Fox? When will the tree come out? He asked the fox. The fox said, it doesn't grow that fast. There are other money trees in the vicinity. You can collect money from them too. Pinocchio believed the fox's words and walked away to find the money trees. The fox thought, how naive. And as soon as Pinocchio was away, he dug the ground and retrieved the money Pinocchio had buried, put the money in his pocket and ran away. Meanwhile, Pinocchio walked around the vicinity, but he couldn't see any tree houses. With frustration, he thought, I will go back to the fox and see my own money tree. When he arrived where he had buried his money, he couldn't see the fox there. However, he noticed that the hole he had buried had been dug open. At that moment, he understood that the fox had tricked him. He was very sad. He started crying then and there in frustration. As he was crying, he felt a hand on his shoulder. When he turned around, he saw the fairy. What's wrong, Pinocchio? Why are you crying? The fairy asked him. Pinocchio, however, did not want to tell her that he was fooled. And so he lied to the fairy once more. I dropped the money you gave me when I was walking on the road. I was going to the bookstore to buy the books, he said. As soon as he finished his sentence, Pinocchio's nose grew longer. The fairy said, Oh, Pinocchio, I told you your nose would grow long if you lied. So this should be the last time you lie. Don't lie to me again, or your nose will grow even longer. So, Pinocchio told the fairy the truth. He told her about the fox, how he had tricked him, and about the money tree. In return, the fairy told Pinocchio not to talk to strangers. It could have been much worse. Pinocchio nodded in acknowledgement and promised not to talk to strangers anymore. So, the fairy gave Pinocchio the money he had lost to the fox and said, now, listen to my words and go directly to the bookstore. And Pinocchio did what she said. He went to the bookstore, bought the books and returned home. As soon as he arrived home, Pinocchio called out for Geppetto. However, there was no answer. He looked 
everywhere, but Geppetto wasn't in the house. So, Pinocchio got outside and started searching for Geppetto. Unfortunately, he couldn't find Geppetto anywhere. At that moment, he saw a friend of Geppetto's. He approached him and asked if he had seen Geppetto. The man told Pinocchio that Geppetto was very worried about him. He searched everywhere for him, and when he couldn't find him, he took a sail to search the sea, but his boat sank during the storm. Pinocchio quickly ran to the beach in horror and fear and jumped into the sea. Then, suddenly, a whale came out of nowhere and swallowed Pinocchio in one piece. When Pinocchio descended into the whale's belly, he heard a familiar voice. He couldn't believe it. Geppetto was right there in front of him. Geppetto told Pinocchio that he was searching for him, but his boat sank and then this whale swallowed him. I don't know how we can escape this place, he said. At that moment, a great idea came to Pinocchio's mind. He told Geppetto about his nose growing longer when he lied. Then he started to tell lie after lie. His nose grew longer and longer, so much so that it reached the whale's throat. The whale, his throat tickling because of Pinocchio's nose, couldn't help himself, but suddenly started to throw up and spitted Pinocchio and his father out of its mouth. The pair, having escaped the whale's belly quickly, swam and arrived at the beach. After that day, Pinocchio never lied again, and he never skipped school. As the days were passing like this one night, Pinocchio thought, everything's very nice, but I wish I were not just a puppet, and that I were a real human. At that moment, the fairy that had given him life appeared out of the night. She said, Pinocchio, you've become a good boy. You never skip school, and you always listen to Geppetto. For this reason, I have a present for you, and waved her wand at Pinocchio. A beam of light surrounded Pinocchio. When the light disappeared, Pinocchio had become a real, living boy. He thanked the fairy, and with excitement, ran to Geppetto's side. Geppetto was very happy to see Pinocchio had become a real human. His only wish had now completely come true. The boy he had always wanted was in front of him, alive. The pair hugged each other with joy, and they lived happily ever after. Pinocchio always remained a good boy, and even though he had become human, he never lied again.